So, changing the way, changing the way we move, changing the way we move. Why? Because we have to. It's a must. And we heard about urbanization this morning. And 70% of the people living on Earth are living in cities. And due to a study by the United Nations in 2050, basically 10 billion people will live on Earth. 70% would mean more than uh, roughly 7 billion people. And actually, that's the number of people living today on Earth. So we just imagine will be squeezed into cities. And just imagine, already we are stuck. There are traffic jams, there's pollution, and there's a noise level very often forgotten. So we have to change. And of course, and I think we are all here in the automotive industry somehow, and we are car lovers. Obviously, with 18, I did my driver's license. I think all of you did. And obviously, with the age of 18, I got my first car. I loved it. And obviously, 20 years later, I get all my savings together. And this morning, we had a presentation also for Jaguar Land Rover. And Land Rover exactly was always my dream car I dreamt about. And still I do. A Land Rover Defender Soft Top 19. And then I realized it. And I know how hard it is to drive it less. And that is exactly what Bernd mentioned also this morning. It is about changing habits. And that's the business in which we are in, in the business of changing habits. Now, can this be done by a single person? Change? No. Can this be done by a single company? Definitely no. But in 2016, Bosch, together with Boston Consulting Group, Digital Ventures saw the opportunity of establishing a free-floating e-scooter service here in Berlin called, named Coop. 100% subsidiary of Bosch, agile company, I can tell you, very vivid, very agile, I love it. And we are providing exactly that service here in Berlin since two and a half years. And how are we playing this role and being part of that solution? Three topics. We access, we grant access to mobility. The other one is we share mobility. And the third one is we take care of how we provide that mobility. Starting with the first point, giving access, granting access. We all still remember 2007 when the iPhone was not only invented but brought to market a little bit more than 10 years ago the smartphone revolution started. And today, basically, there are more mobile devices on Earth than there are people living on Earth. 50% are smartphones, and there are 1.5 billion smartphones sold each and every year. And with this device, we do have access. We do have access to information. We do have access to services. And of course, nowadays, we do have access to mobility. Whenever we want, wherever we are, with the tip of a button, instantly. And this is how we provide access. So this is our key to mobility. And how we grant access of within Coop. Basically, it is a battle always. There are millions of apps there around. And to be on the front page of your device or the second page, you need to be meaningful and it need to be simple. So the service is meaningful, which we are offering, and our access is very simple. Just with three clicks, basically, you search, you book, and then you go. Right now, we have an iOS app, which is almost five-star ranked on Android. We're always discussing. We have to struggle a little bit more. Let's say we are ramping up, not five-star rated yet, but we are working on. And with this access, we give access today to 3,500 scooters as we speak as of today. Now, can these 3,500 scooters be owned by a single person? 
Well, no. Well, yes. Because that is the second point we share. And because we share, out of a sudden, you have access to more, in our case vehicles, in our case scooters, than what you could own yourself, but you have the access. And that's the reason why we have the booming sharing economy, whether it's in music, Spotify, 20 billion uh, value, same as Airbnb, whoever would have thought that we would share our rooms. So now, in a mobility, we share our scooters. And there's another thing, which is also kicking in here a value. So first is having access to more what you are able to own, first thing. Second thing, and I personally never thought that was, would be really a value, is uh, over-owning that is the hassle of owning, because there sometimes is also a hassle of owning. So if you go from A to B, there are use cases when you are glad that you don't have to take care of the parking and that you don't have to worry about if you go on holiday, where on the two weeks vacation time is my car sitting. So if you go from A to B, you can just simply forget about it. And that is another value. So we share already, here you have three dots. We began in Berlin, then we started further in 2017 with, uh, with Paris, and last year actually we launched Madrid. Now you would ask, I've, uh, let's say very often um, has been raised that question, hey Bernd, what is the next city? Well, that would be directly the next question, right, to ask the next city. Well, sharing is about flexibility, and flexibility is about availability. So how many use cases do you have? You need to have availability of scooters. And availability of scooters has something to do with density. So our next city this year is not a city. This year, our next city is increasing the density. So what we will do is we will introduce 1,500 scooters more this year, 500 each in each city, to exactly do this, to increase the density, to increase the availability for our users, and to increase the flexibility for more use cases or more options for our users. And this is exactly what uh, our, our um, part and our positioning within the micro-mobility space is. So we are basically part of this micro-mobility space to offer um, options for a lot of use cases. And there, the micro-mobility space is basically defined as such, uh, like McKinsey says, 60% of, um, of all rides within a city are within the range of eight kilometers. And that is defined the range of micro-mobility space in which we are as well. So they also put a uh, a dollar sign on, in 2030, they expect this market, uh, I see colleagues here, we are talking about valuation of the market, 300 billion to 500 billion US dollar. Very, very huge, I would say. So it's a very interesting market, um, which will develop even further from, from today. So we are placed in this micro-mobility space, and just in between, Short walking, for instance, which is, doesn't cost anything. And on the other hand side, taxi rides, which are more costly, but gives you a little bit more private space, or also a roof, which we don't have with a, with a scooter. But we offer um, the service for a lot of use cases, going to the restaurant, going from one meeting to the other, or on a Sunday, eventually also going an entire day to the beach and returning back to the back to the city. Now, this is about the service we offer, the use cases, but also we take care of how we provide that service. So we take care. And I think also this we have heard uh, during the conference uh, very often, that basically the um, intergovernmental panel for climate change in 12 years 
has this two degree warming where this uh, won't be any more reversible. And um, this uh, very famous Greta Thunberg right now is obviously in all newspapers and she's very, very engaged and uh, heard that she says, and she's right, I think, we need to panic. And with Volkmar Denner in his speech actually announcing uh, in the press conference, he says it's not a science fiction, it's a fact. And it's a fact. And that's the reason why companies take care as well, why cities take care as well, and take initiatives. Bosch just recently, just this week, actually announced that by 2020, um, the CO2 um, neutrality will be given from Bosch, and they also, Bosch will also invest 1 billion euros by the end of 2030. So leading here, cities, if the pollution level is high, temporarily close down the city, like Stuttgart sometimes, for certain types of combustion engine cars to exactly mitigate that, um, that, uh, that further risk. Or there are cities, like for instance Madrid, they closed down the inner city circle already completely for combustion engine and only allowing electric vehicles. And that's the reason, also in the automotive industry, a lot of OEMs obviously also focusing on electric vehicles. And last week, actually, uh, Volkswagen just introduced, launched the ID3. And uh, the servers crashed. They, they, they uh, launched the ID3, and you had to pay 1,000 euros only to reserve an option, and the servers uh, just crashed. So there's also a high demand for the users, from the users towards those electric vehicles. Now, cities do have the challenge now to incorporate the charging infrastructure. And this morning we saw from Chargery a solution which is uh, driven on a, on, a, on a bike coming to the electric vehicle to charge, up, uh, to charge up the car. But the usual way is, let's say, having an infrastructure built in a city to, get, uh, to help also to grow this electrification and to help grow the usage of electric cars. Now, cities, in our case, they don't have to worry about this charging infrastructure because we are taking care of exactly that. So Coop is electrifying cities, and we are taking care of this electrification. The same thing for the user. The user doesn't have to take care of getting the scooters, electric scooters charged. We are doing the job. And how we do this? We do have charging stations like you see here, and we are directly swapping the batteries in the field. So literally, we are actually electrifying cities. But above all, we are also electrifying us and the users, the fun part. So if you, and I hope a lot of you, have already been used our service, and you have sitting on uh, one of our scooters. And if you turn the throttle, it does one thing. It pushes a smile on your face. And you will be electrified. I grant it. Have a look. When hailing rides in heavy traffic, or using an app to find the route of our dreams, our cities are connected. We enjoy the silence of driving electric. It keeps us moving faster through the urban landscape. We enjoy the fun of being on the road, free to choose how we move through the crowd, seamlessly transitioning from the metro to the city streets, connecting with each other. Coop, enhancing the way we move with electrifying rides that bring us together. Enhancing the way we move. Enhancing the way we move with electrifying rides. To sum it up, what do we do? We grant access to mobility, we share mobility, and we take care of mobility. Is this easy? Definitely not. So each and every time we have to twist 
tweak our product, get a new app into the market. Sometimes also a shit storm is coming against us. Also this you have to react on and you, let's say, sustain on. But in the end, it is about connecting the dots to create connected mobility. And again, with uh, um, a quote from uh, Mr. Denner, he says that connected mobility will fundamentally change the way how we move and already as of today will help us solving the traffic problems we are faced today. And we fully agree with Coop, Bosch actually is part of that solution. I would even go beyond is driving the change. And if you want to be part of that movement, this is a super easy way to be part of. Just download the app, get the coupe, have the electrifying ride, and in a sense of the Bosch Connected world, keep connecting. Thank you very much.